Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Belt. My name is Kelly. Today we're doing a 1300 mile review of the Ultimate 9 throttle controller that is wireless. And there's a feature in this that will blow your mind. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Right now I'm in Kanab, Utah. I left the Phoenix area uh, at like 10 o'clock this morning. I am 400, almost 400 miles into this journey. And I basically wanted to get a good baseline without the throttle controller. And what I'm gonna be doing is installing it roadside. This is so easy to do. This is the new model of the Ultimate 9. I have the old model that is a wired version. And this is actually a wireless version you can basically use just with your Bluetooth app, which is perfect. I mean, that was one of the things that kind of was a little bit of a hiccup with the Ultimate 9 is running the wires behind the dash. Now you don't have to do that and it's even better. In the box, you have your control module. You also have your wiring harness that plugs into the pedal. And you get a cool little carrying bag for your module because like I said, you don't need to have it plugged in. Downloading the app is super easy. All you do is open up the guide here, put your Put your phone over the QR code. Now that I've got the app downloaded, I'm going to install the throttle controller on the pedal itself. All I'm gonna do is disassemble these two pieces here. Installation is quite simple. One end goes into the top of the pedal on the Tacoma. The other end goes into the wiring harness that originally went into the pedal. And then your USB-C cable that comes out of the Ultimate 9 goes right into the Ultimate 9 module. And once you've got the USB-C out, all you do is plug it right into the Ultimate 9 right on the side. And now we turn the power onto the vehicle. Now with the power to the vehicle on, you're gonna push both left and right of the silver buttons here at the same time. It's gonna give an ID number. I'm gonna put the ID number into the app of the phone and this is gonna be the main screen right when you turn the app on. The previous screen wanted the last four digits of the serial number on the device itself, which is the part of the device that's actually attached to the pedal. So I'd go underneath there, get the last four of the serial number, and now I'm into the actual functionality of the app itself. The only way that I could really tell that my app was definitely connected to the remote was when I clicked the buttons on the uh, controller, it actually affected the app. So now I know 100% that it is connected. <laughs> this thing is pretty cool. All right, let's test it out. Just driving through Kanab here really quick, just basically checking out the functionality of the app uh, compared to just using the uh, their controller device. It really is very similar and the app is just much easier to use. All of the, uh, like there's not codes you have to decipher to figure out where you're at. Like on the controller, the app is very self-explanatory. You can read each icon and you can kind of figure out where in that icon you want to run. So uh, right now, I think what the test I'm going to do is for the next uh, three hours, I'll be driving in the dark. The only thing I can think of doing right now to test the Ultimate 9 would be an economy test, which uh, I have the first 400 miles, which uh, from Phoenix to uh, here in Kanab, which is my basically baseline. And then I'm going to do tonight's driving and maybe into tomorrow a little bit on economy mode and see what kind of gas mileage difference I get because people want to know, do they really, does economy mode really work to your advantage to get better fuel economy, especially in these very thirsty Tacomas with 35s? Well, good morning. Obviously, my day's not going so well by the road noise. I ended up camping right off the road because I had a flat tire in my trailer last night. More cars. Yep. This is what I basically heard all night last night while I was trying to sleep. So 30 miles outside of Kanab, I ended up get blowing a tire on my passenger side. I was listening to the radio, kind of loud, heard a noise, turned the radio down, sounded like something dragging. I pulled off the side of the road, realized that I was on the rim on the passenger side tire of my trailer. Luckily, I just had a brand new spare tire put on the wheel that I've been carrying around for the last 15 years. So I was prepared for this. So I pulled out all my tools. I had broken extension on my breaker bar getting the lug nuts off and they almost didn't come off because they were locked on so tight. I was able to get those off, pull all my, uh, first off, I had to tear my whole truck apart to find my headlamp because it wasn't in my camera bag where it normally is. Then I basically had to uh, pull the whole truck apart again to pull my jack out because it's under my seat because I don't have my big jack because it's at home. So I finally get the trailer jacked up, get the wheel off, 
go to put the new spare tire on only to realize that the fender is caved in because when the tire ripped, it caught the fender and folded it in. So then I beat on that for an hour before I realized that I had a come along and was able to use that to pull it out. Uh, and then when I finally got everything able to put the tire back on the rim or on the hub, uh, the tire lug nut pattern is wrong. The wheel lug pattern is wrong for the trailer. I've been carrying the spare around for 15 years. I've had this trailer for 25 years and uh, yeah, it's definitely let me down on this trip. First trip ever, uh, gotta give it some slack. Uh, it's an oldie but a goodie. So now I have to run into town. Uh, I just called the town about 30 miles away. They've got a spare wheel hopefully for me and uh, a couple spare wheels and a spare tire. Hopefully get this thing fixed and back on the road because running late. Always pick up all your trash. I'm back on the road, and if you guys are ever in Panguiting, something to that effect, Panguich, Panguich, Utah, which is in southern Utah outside of Kanab, uh, be sure to hit up Orton Tire. These guys are amazing. They got me right in. They knew I was in trouble. They knew my trailer was sitting on a jack stand out in the middle of nowhere, 30 minutes away. They let me, they basically just did my tires. They're like, hey, dude, go get your trailer. You know, I know you're worried about it. Come back. We'll inspect your other tire and you can pay then. So don't worry about it. So these guys were super great, very honorable, and they did a great job very quick. And they actually were able to save my, my uh, stock wheel. So I only had to replace the wheel for the spare, not necessarily all of them, which was great. Now we've got a lot of mileage to make up. Let's hit the road. Made it to Idaho Falls. This is the last fill up for the economy mode of the Ultimate 9. So glad that's out of the way. Now let's have some fun. And I will put all these numbers, I will talk about them at the end of the video. So you wanna skip ahead by all means. However, you're gonna miss some cool Ultimate 9 acceleration. So on the app here, you can see that there's a setting for Econo, Adapt, Launch, Ultimate, where you can actually pick where you want this to land. So you could be at ultimate one or ultimate nine, or if you have it down to ultimate two, you can just click this top left icon right to ultimate nine. Got my little bag of Swedish fish here. This is my, uh, I don't know, little celebratory snack after uh, completing the Econo testing, which is a little painful, but you know, it's good to get those baselines to show that the Ultimate 9, if it really is saving people money. Uh, people ask you like, what, what kind of a fuel economy do you get for your vehicle? What kind of mileage per gallon do you get? It really is, has to a lot to do with how you drive your vehicle. If you drive your vehicle like you're racing everywhere, you're gonna get horrible miles per gallon. But if you drive very uh, economy oriented, you will get great gas mileage. I don't necessarily always drive economy oriented, so the Ultimate 9 is taking care of that for me. Uh, basically imagine that, you're, that your throttle is on a spring and it basically takes a long time to get up to that gradual increase in speed which is going to make your economy and your gas mileage uh, drastically improve over if you didn't have it. Now I put it in Ultimate 9, still at the gas station and let's see what it uh, See what it's all about. It totally feels like before I put it in economy mode, kind of normal. But let's see once I actually get on it, because I know the ultimate settings are very, very sensitive. So I'm being very cautious. Also, I have completely unplugged the module. I unplugged it last night. The app still runs flawlessly 
with the module unplugged, so you don't need that. Um, I'm basically gonna take that cable and zip tie it up under the dash, so if I ever need it, it'll be there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Ultimate 9 just kicked in. I gave it a little bit of throttle, and man, this thing is opened up. Drastic improvement over uh, factory and way, way better than the uh, Econo 9 sighting. Yeah, this uh, Ultimate 9 is a beast. <laughs> you hear that just rev up? Even pulling the trailer, which is a big anchor on this thing, we are moving now. So I'm gonna leave it on Ultimate 9 for one, maybe two gas stops and we'll kind of see what the miles per gallon is. I'm gonna say it's gonna be garbage. That's my prediction. But you guys have got to wait till the very end when I tabulate out the gas mileage and I reveal the ultimate secret the Ultimate 9 has in store for anybody that gets it. And it is the main reason why I upgraded from the original Ultimate 9 to the new uh, Bluetooth enabled Ultimate 9. It is 100% worth it, stay tuned. All right, I made it. I am in Whitefish, Montana, 1,226 miles later. I split it up into three phases. First phase was the baseline. Second phase was Economy 9. And then the last phase was Ultimate 9. Before I talk numbers about how much money the Ultimate 9 saved me uh, and how much it could possibly save me, let's talk other features. I haven't started the truck in two days. Let's see if it will connect right away on the Bluetooth app without the module connected. Oh, that was really fast. Let's talk about the different settings really quick, starting at the top. Anti-slip is really cool, very much a low speed setting. And basically if you're in ice or something to where you don't wanna lose traction, like if you're going through some a water crossing with lots of boulders and stuff where you really wanna keep that slow momentum, uh, just going across something very slowly, anti-slip is where you wanna be because it literally only goes just over a thousand RPMs and it just slowly goes into second gear. So the most you're gonna get out of this thing is maybe like 15 miles per hour. Let's check it out. So right now I'm doing a little bit of a mud puddle. Oh, and it's starting to rain. So right now I've got it floored and we're doing just over a thousand RPM at 10 miles an hour in this little pit that I'm in. And the truck is just barely cruising through it. I shouldn't say barely, it is cruising through it at a really good clip. And this is a great setting, like I said, for ice. Now going into your factory setting is very obvious. It basically takes all of the functionality of the Ultimate 9 and reverts it back to the factory setting, basically makes it pass through, um, just like as if it wasn't there, which is great if you just want to see the difference. Back and quickly, you want to go back to factory to see the difference between Ultimate 9 and factory setting and Economy 9 and factory setting or Economy 1 or Ultimate 1. Whatever setting you choose to use, you can compare it directly to the factory setting just by push of a button. 
We've already talked about the push button ultimate nine setting as well as the ultimate settings. That's basically the ultimate nine is going right to the top peak end of that ultimate setting. And obviously if you're in regular ultimate, you can pick and choose which setting one all the way up to nine. Below that is gonna be launch. And launch is basically a setting that allows you just to get really quick acceleration and then it kind of goes back to a more steady pace. All right, so let's test this. Test the launch feature on the road here. Yeah, the truck really wants to go. So immediately, first gear, it got up to 5,500 RPM, second gear, 5,100 RPM. So it really, it is wanting to just go. And then obviously in third gear, it started to kind of ease off. Yeah, the drone can barely keep up. This is funny. And last but not least, adapt mode. And this is my favorite setting. This basically allows the ultimate nine to kind of decide where you want to be depending on how hard you're mashing that throttle. It can range anywhere from Econo uh, nine all the way up to ultimate nine or Econo one or whatever. So it, it basically will go through and pick kind of how it thinks that you want to drive. And I have found it just to be the best option because if you really want to get off the line quick, it'll kick it in ultimate nine, you get all that power. As soon as you let off the gas, it goes back into Econo mode, kind of like launch. But again, launch is always fast off the off the line, and then it slows down as you get up to pace. Uh, adapt will basically, if you are very smooth on the pedal, it will allow you to be very smooth on the acceleration. So it kind of picks and chooses how, uh, according to your driving style, how it wants to react. And the adapt function is super intuitive, and it's kind of where I leave the Ultimate 9, just because it is the best option for me. Sorry about the rain, but let's talk numbers. So I have a whole bunch of data I recorded as I drove. I did a bunch of calculations, my brain hurts, and I have all the receipts to back everything up as long as the uh, Gaia track and all the Google map directions uh, turn by turn. Uh, so I have the exact mileage. Um, I did not go off my odometer because F35s, it's it's inaccurate to what I actually drove. So I'm going off of Gaia, uh, which is GPS, and Google Maps, which is kind of point to point. So let's see my total mileage from Surprise, Arizona to Whitefish, Montana, 1,352 total miles. Now of that, my baseline gas mileage averaged out to 9.83 miles per gallon. And you got to remember, this is pulling my trailer um, and I'm super loaded down. I've got a bunch of extra stuff in the truck, moving some stuff up here from Arizona to Montana. All right. Now this is pretty impressive. The Econo 9 setting, uh, I did 558 miles worth and my average miles per gallon was 12.83 miles per gallon. And that's exactly three miles per gallon better than the baseline without any Ultimate 9 input whatsoever, just the truck with 35s, the tune, and that's it. And of course, driving with a little bit of a heavy foot. Also, I kept the truck at the whole drive up here between 58 and 65, right in that range. Um, I tried to stay right at 60, but obviously with hills, it was just a little challenging with the trailer. I just didn't want to do it. Uh, all right, and then for the Ultimate 9 setting for... Uh, 446 miles of testing, I'm sorry, 398 miles of testing, I averaged out to 10.41 miles per gallon. And that's actually really cool. I actually got um, almost one mile per gallon better using the Ultimate 9 setting um, than factory, which is weird because it's a very aggressive acceleration, but maybe just there being more power at the top end, it was just easier to keep that 60, 65 miles per gallon. So maybe that's why. I don't know, but the numbers don't lie. It's all right here. Now, this is also impressive. Let's extrapolate this out. If I had used the Econo 9 mode for the entire trip of 1,352 miles and I was getting 12.83 average for the whole trip, I would have saved $123.61, averaging out the uh, cost of fuel to be 384 per gallon because obviously in Arizona the most expensive it was 417 per gallon and then up here in Montana it was 345 a gallon 
So averaging that gas price out to 384, I could have saved $123.61, which is super impressive because the Ultimate 9X only costs like $208. So I mean, the I've pretty much just using the setting for that 558 miles almost paid for the Ultimate 9X. And we haven't even gotten to the best part yet. I'm about to tell you how you can literally save the entire price of your vehicle by getting the Ultimate 9X. The Bluetooth connection has three more settings I haven't talked about. One is valet mode. Now valet mode basically allows you to uh, lock it into valet mode. And if you go to a restaurant, value your vehicle, it will only allow your vehicle to go to, I think 25 miles per hour, which basically no one's stealing your car at 25 miles an hour. Kids aren't gonna be out there doing burnouts with it. So that's actually awesome. Uh, peace of mind, if you do do that thing, I never go to the valet, but if that's something you do, that's a great one. Also, two other settings, lock and unlock. Lock setting is going to save you the price of your vehicle. Lock setting basically is a dead pedal. Uh, if you put it in lock mode, you walk away from your vehicle, even if someone gets a hold of your keys and gets in your truck and tries to, and is able to turn it on, all they can do is idle. They'll never get above idle speed. Um, there is an idle, it obviously does start, but the pedal is completely dead. You can stomp on it all you want. There's no acceleration other than idle, which is perfect. So now uh, I don't have to worry about my truck being stolen because it's a very expensive vehicle. I've got a lot of money invested in it and I would hate for that just to drive off without me in it. Also, my wife, I could lock that out and then my wife will be like, hey, the truck's not running. I'll be like, I don't know, babe, that's weird. I'll have to look at that, I don't know. Oh, and let me go back. In 2021, I did the almost same trip, surprise to Whitefish. And I averaged without a trailer and a little bit lighter of a load. I wasn't hauling anything else up here except for overland gear. I averaged 13.98 uh, miles per gallon, so almost 14 miles per gallon, all freeway, just driving up here, no, no trails, just freeway. So that's pretty impressive in factory setting. Um, if I kind of extrapolate this out, I could be getting 16 miles per gallon possibly with this unloaded. So I'll definitely keep up to date for those future testings because this is very impressive. This economy mode, I'm probably gonna drive that around because the 35s in this thing, the gas mileage, it's, it's kind of a gas suck. And if you would like an Adventure Belt t-shirt or a Back Road to Mountain West t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, uh, these all go to support Brian King's nonprofit to bring clean drinking water to Sub-Saharan Africa, an amazing cause. Get on the Adventure Built website, advbuilt.com, and check out what I have in stock. These are gonna go pretty quick and get one for yourself. All right, guys, see you on the next one.